bless you tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. You deserve all the best that comes from us. Nobody else, Father God, is like you. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praises. You are Lord and you are God and you are mighty. You are Jesus, our Passover Lamb. Lord, we want to just tonight just thank you for giving us Christ, our Passover Lamb. And in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, we lift up your name, O God. We lift up your name, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, King of Glory. Thank you that God Almighty, you are the Lord that enters our hearts and we don't remain the same. You are the God who brings revolution in our own personal spaces. When King, King David speaks about you, he calls you the eternal God, the eternal Father, the everlasting one. You are the Lord who sits at the throne of grace in that Father. When we come before you, we receive grace and mercy in all kinds of times that we may find ourselves within. Thank you for every life, Lord, that is part of this broadcast tonight. Thank you, Father God, for the realities of the Passover, the realities of Jesus, who is our Passover lamb. Thank you that, God, it is in times like these that the realities that are taught by Scripture with regard to Christ, our Passover, shall begin to be experienced in the precious name of Jesus. I want to take this time, Lord, just to thank you. I want to take this time, Lord, just to worship you, just to bow before you and thank you, God Almighty, for your hand of grace that is upon us, that is giving us acceleration, that is giving us levels of brilliance we never thought we can flow and move upon. In the wonderful name of Jesus, you are a loving Father. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening to all of you. I want to greet you in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Welcome um, to tonight's session. We are in um, the second day of our online Passover conference. Remember, Christ is our Passover lamb. And uh, we want to take this time to thank you for tuning in, to thank you for coming in, those of you that are coming in via Skype, those of you that are coming in via Facebook, those of you that are coming in um, uh, via the online Passover, uh, WhatsApp group that we have, and different groups that are part of this Passover. Uh, it's amazing how technology can unite, you know, all of us and bring, you know, the sons of God together just to, to celebrate nothing else, to celebrate nobody else but Jesus. This is not about me. This is not about anybody creating a name for themselves, but this is about Jesus. And we want to make him the center of this. Every session, we want to make it about him. We want to talk about him until we talk about him and talk about him and talk about him. You know, and then when we close, we open, we talk about him. He becomes our topic. Christ, the man who is who was on the cross, the, the cross which was in the middle, the cross in the middle, the cross in the middle. There was a thief on the left, there was a thief on the right. But Jesus was the man hanging in the middle cross. That reveals to us Christ-centeredness. The man in the middle is our focus. Christ is the middle of everything we're doing. Christ is our main and central focus. In the volume of the book, is written about him. The whole Bible is written about him. From Genesis to Revelation, is about him. From Revelation back to Genesis, is about him. When we read scriptures, we look for nothing else but Christ. There's, there's nothing hidden about scriptures. There's nothing difficult about scriptures because the center of scriptures is Jesus. And tonight, I want us to celebrate him. I want, to, I want us to, 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 to take this time just to celebrate Christ, our Passover lamb and enjoy him and sit at his feet to hear him talk to us, to hear him change us, to hear him open our eyes. And I promise, I promise you, when you come to Jesus, there won't be there won't be a, something that you will regret. You will not regret by sitting at the feet of Jesus. Thank you so very much. And tonight is a wonderful, wonderful evening. 
we, we, we are going to enjoy the word of God and the impartation of the spirit of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I can see a number of you on our Skype group. you coming in. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Just wave wherever you are. Just, you know, just, just wave back to me wherever you are. And um, those of you that are on, on Facebook, just, uh, just, 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 uh, just write on our comment section where you are watching from and the city that you represent and the part of the body of Christ that you represent. If you are in Uganda, just write Uganda Kampala. If you are in, um, uh, you know, Burundi, Bujumbura, just write Bujumbura. Love you so very much and we're going to go into the word of God in the precious name of Jesus. In the morning, we dealt with two things. We dealt with dimensions of the grace in the morning. We, we hammered a little bit on, on the issues of grace uh, in Noah, Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 and 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 46 where we speak about the hand of God that came upon uh, the man by the name of Elijah and Elijah outran King Ahab all the way to Jezreel. So tonight we want to um, um, expand it further because from what we spoke about with regards to the issues of grace, then we then moved to the second part where we were speaking about um, the elements or, or the issues of hearing. You know, uh, the issues of hearing, the issues of hearing, the ear that hear and, 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 and the eye that see. But we didn't speak about the eye that see. We we dwelt much on the ear that he hears. So I want to expand that and, and, and just push it a little bit further because we did not finish. We just touched the basics of that and and, and, and we are going to expand it within the context of Passover. Very, very important. We are going to deal with issues of hearing within the context of Passover, within the context of of Passover. Christ is our Passover lamb. Christ is our Passover lamb. So we, we are going to, um, to, to look at the ear that hear within the context of Passover. Let's read our scriptures tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Um, we, we're going to have two sessions and, and and the first session that we are going to have, we, we will be looking at uh, the issues of um, uh, uh, hearing the ear that hear and then we'll talk much about that and then afterwards we then move to other dimensions um, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now let's read um, a couple of verses and then we will combine what we're reading together and then start to teach from that. Let's read from, from the book of Exodus 29 verse 20. We'll also read Leviticus chapter 8. Then we'll read 23 and verse 24. Let's read. Slaughter it. This was God speaking to Moses. Slaughter it meaning, you know, a sacrifice. Take some of his blood, put it on the lobes or the tips of the right ears of Aaron and his sons, on the thumb, thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. Then sprinkle blood against the altar on all sides. Leviticus 8.23, it reads as follows. Moses slaughtered the ram. The ram is a, is a sheep. Moses slaughtered the ram and took some of its blood. The ram, sacrifice. The ram, Jesus. Jesus, our Passover. And he took some of its blood, put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear, on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. In other words, three places where the 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 the, 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 the is the is the is you know you know sprinkling of the blood or dropping of the blood. Moses has to slaughter the ram. After slaughtering the ram, he had to take part of the blood and sprinkle drops of the blood in three places. I want you to get that. The blood on the ear, on the tip of the ear of Aaron together with his sons. That's what verse 24 also tells us. And also at the right thumb of the right hand and also at the right foot, big toe. Three places. The right ear, the right thumb, and the right big toe. 
three places. Don't forget that. And look at the alignment. The alignment is not on the left side of the body. The alignment is at the right side of the body. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for the saints. Don't forget that. The position of Christ is at the right hand of the Father. Now, the the, the, the blood which was supposed to be applied on the Old Testament priesthood of Aaron and his sons. The Bible says that there must be blood on their ears. There must be blood on the right thumb. There must be blood on the right big toe. Now, the blood speaks, number one, of the life of Jesus. That's number one. Number two, the blood speaks of the price that Jesus paid. Now, when you see the blood in scripture, you must remember that the blood is the, the price of redemption. It is the price that Jesus paid to redeem us. So, blood, number one, is life. When you see the blood, when you study about the blood of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, there is the life of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus, there is the life of Jesus. Number two, within, within, within the context of Passover, blood as well is the price that Jesus paid to, to redeem us or to purchase you know, the right to save us. is the price of our redemption. So blood is the price. Now notice this. So when the blood in the Old Testament was being dropped at this Old Testament, priesthood in the new testament we are all priests we are all royal priesthood according to the order of melchizedek we are all priesthoods the bible says that we are all part of the priesthood the bible says that jesus made us kings and priests so in the new testament priest is all the sons of god anybody who is a son of god is also a priest of god then we have to also study about the the the, the priesthood of all believers but we're not going to study about the today. So when you look at the, 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 the dropping of the blood, where the blood is being dropped or where the blood is being applied, number one, the blood was applied on the tips of their ears. The right ear has to have the tip of the blood. The right ear has to have the tip of the blood. There's a revelation there. Now the revelation about that is this. The revelation about that is this. Is that now when the blood is being dropped at the tip of the right ear of this priesthood. Now in the new covenant which Jesus is our high priesthood forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the new testament what needs to happen is this. Is that in the ears or in the ears of every believer. God has to purchase, watch this, he has to purchase the right to have our ears to, 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 to come into a place where our spiritual ears have the ability to hear him. Now, uh, uh, the, the ear with the blood of Jesus on it is the ear that has come into a place where now this ear has been bought and the one who bought the ear want to speak things and things must be heard by that ear. I want you to get that. I want you to get that. It's going to be beautiful tonight. It's going to be awesome tonight. It's going to be awesome tonight. The one who died for you, he did not just die to, you know, for you, for your sins only. He also bought the right to have your ears to hear his voice. The blood of Jesus in the New Testament, in within the context of the New Covenant, he did not just die for you to go to heaven. He did not just die for you to have life and heaven in abundance. He also got the right to purchase your spiritual ears so that your ears can be tuned into the frequencies of heaven and hear him clearly. He who paid the price for that ear has the right to whisper and talk to that ear. We want to say that again. 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 He who bought the right. Watch this. He who bought the right. He who bought the right on that ear deserves to speak and that ear must hear him. Blood on the right ear. Blood on the right thumb. Blood on the big toe. These are all different dimensions of revelations that we can teach on them for the whole night. But we are only looking for a few things there. Now, once blood is now on the right thumb of the of the of the high priest and his sons, it means this for us. It means this for us. It means that through the blood of Jesus, watch this. Through the blood of Jesus, Jesus now has bought the ability for us to come into a place where that which we hear we can now also touch it 
that which you hear, that which you hear, that which you hear from him can be translated into realities and tangibles that you can touch. That which we have heard, according to the book of John, that which we have heard, that which we have seen, that which our own hands have handled concerning the word of grace. In other words, what we hear from God must not end up in hearing. What you hear from Jesus must not end up in the hearing part only. It must be translated into what? Into realities. It must become tangible. In other words, the word, listen to this, the word which you are hearing from him, watch this, the word which you are hearing from him has to be the word that becomes flesh and you can hold it. You, in other words, the word we hear must be translated into tangibles. Don't just hear things from God. The things which you are hearing from God must become tangibles that you can hold. I want to say that again. 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 Within within the context of the new covenant, blood in the ears of the priest, blood in the hand of the priest, what he hear must become tangibles that he can touch. Don't just hear a message. Don't just hear a teaching. The teachings we hear must be translated into realities. The teachings that we hear must become realities that we can touch and point and say, this was the result of the word I heard. In other words, the word I hear which sharpens and forms Christ within me. These dimensions that we are hearing from God must become tangibles. The, the, the bottom line is that the preaching must not end up in entertaining us. The teaching must not end up in entertaining us. You must not end up in hearing. The hearing must birth what? Must birth things that can be tangible. In other words, there are tangibles that are within. On Sunday, I spoke about processing manner until it becomes another state or in, until it becomes another tangible. In other words, now when you hear a word from God, when you hear a teaching from God, that teaching must bring about tangibles. There must be no teaching that entertains you. There must be no teaching that end up, you know, in just entertainment. So in other words, everything we are hearing from God, everything we are hearing from God has to come to a place where these teachings must become tangibles. In other words, what the priest is hearing, what the the priest is hearing Aaron and his son. In other words, God bought the right for them to hear. There is a right that Jesus is having over your spiritual ear. And he wants that ear to hear him. When he talks, my sheep know my voice. God wants you to come to a place where you know his voice. And when he sound, that you know, when heaven start to resonate, when heaven start to release sound, there must be a people on earth who are having the blood of Jesus in their ear. The ears that have been tuned in to hear him talking. These are the ears that Jesus was talking about. Let him who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying. What, what the Spirit is saying must be received on earth by a priesthood that is not just, you know, having uncircumcised ears. The ears must be circumcised. The ears must be awakened to hear him talk. When God sound, we must hear him. The Bible says that Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they had God. They had the sound of God in the garden of Eden. In other words, there is a sound coming from the heavens. Are you ready to hear that sound? It only will take a people who are having what? Who are having a dimension of ears that have been bought by the blood of Jesus. Jesus did not just die for you to be healed. He did not just die for you to go to heaven. He did not just die for you to have life and heaven in abundance. There is more in the blood of Jesus. And part of what is in the blood of Jesus is to purchase your ears so that he when he talks, you can hear him. When he talks, you can tell, this is God. This is the voice I know. My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. He wants you to come to that place. Now, when you are done with the ear that can hear God, you need to come now to a place where that which I hear now becomes tangible, that which I can touch. The tangible. Listen to what John says in the book of First John chapter 1 verse 1. John says that which was from the beginning. Watch this. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have heard, which our own eyes have seen. In other words, what you hear, your eyes must also see. What you hear, your eyes must also see. If you hear God sounding, you must also see what God is going to do out of that sound. Because every time when God sound the sound from heaven, there is something 
anything coming. When you hear the sound of heavy rain, let it not end up in hearing the sound of the heavy rain. We must also see this rain that we are hearing. When you hear the coming revival, you must also see this revival that you are hearing. Now watch this. John says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which have we have seen with our own eyes. Every revelation that you are hearing from God, his idea and purpose and agenda is that you may also come to a place where you see these things that you are hearing. The revelation that you are hearing must be clear. The revelation that you are also hearing must be seen. We're going to talk about dimensions of seeing, not so long. But let's talk about hearing. And the Bible says that which we have also looked upon, and I want this part, and our hands have handled. It started by hearing, and it moved to a place where the hands have handled it. Are you handling what is being spoken out of the word of God? Are we handling the things that are locked within the word? John says, that which we have heard, our own eyes have seen it, and our own hands have handled it. Out of what we are hearing, there are tangibles. Out of what we are hearing, there are realities. In other words, the revelation that we are hearing must move from just hearing into the realities. There are realities within what we are hearing, and our own hands must touch it. In other words, out of God's word, there must be things that you can touch and say, this is the product of the word. This is the product of the revelation. This is the product of the revelation. Listen to this. Abraham and his wife Sarah heard from God that they will have a son next year by this time. And when the time comes, the word which they have heard last year became a tangible at the exact time. Isaac is the tangible of what Abraham and Eve, I mean Abraham and Sarah heard. What you hear must become a tangible. What we hear here must become a tangible. Watch this. Now, after after anointing their right thumb with blood, Moses must also anoint what? He must also anoint the what? He must also anoint the big toe of the right foot. The big toe of the right foot. Don't just hear. Let it not just become a tangible you can hold and handle for yourself. But you must also start to walk upon the things you have heard. Walk upon the things you have seen with your eyes. Walk upon the things that you are touching which are tangible. John says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children, my sons or children are walking in the truth. The greatest pleasure and the greatest joy of any apostolic leader is when you move now to a place where you are walking upon the truth they've taught you. You are walking upon the revelation they've taught you. The teachings we are teaching you as your pastors, we are not just there to teach you to take notes. We want these teachings to be translated and the heart of God is that they must be translated and become realities. And every reality must be something that we walk upon. The right food, the, the, the right food with the big toe is representing what? A generation that walks on the revelation. The greatest level of any revelation is not hearing it. The greatest level of any revelation is not just touching it when it becomes tangible. It's also now walk on the very things we have heard. That which we have heard is what our eyes have seen, is what our hands have handled, and now we are walking on it. I have no greater joy, John says, to, than to hear that, you know, that our, my, our, my, my children walk in the truth. Third John 1 verse 4. The, uh, the, the last part of this is that Jesus bought the price through his blood. He paid the price to have us as the church to walk in dominion, to have us as the church to walk in power, to have us as the church to walk in miracles, to have us as the church to walk upon minerals, to walk upon, you know, dimensions of, of, of dominion. He want us not just to talk about dominion. He want us not just to see things unfolding. He also want us to walk on the same things we're hearing. If he, if he did it with Peter, Peter was in the boat with the twelve, and when they saw him in the morning, they asked in the in the in the in the, in the fourth watch, they asked, you know, you know. They ask each other, what is it that they were seeing? And we'll talk about seeing not so long. What is it that they were seeing? And they, and they were seeing and they thought Jesus was a ghost. And they cried out, you know, out of fear. And Jesus calmed them down and says, no, 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 no. This is not the ghost. This is I. And Peter says that, you know, if Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus says to him, come. And Peter started to walk on what he heard and what his eyes saw. He started to walk on the revelation that he heard. He started to walk on what his eyes were seeing. It's not enough for 
us to become spectators and see what God is doing. We also need to come into a place where we walk on the same thing. We want to come to a place where we walk in the same authority. The authority that God is walking upon. As the sons, we must be walking on it on earth. The dominion that God is having, the dominion that God is having as the sons, we must be walking upon it. Through Jesus, there is a right that he has got in his hand to give it to us when we receive him as the sons. When we come to him, he gives us the right to walk on things. There is a right that he is having for you to walk on things. Don't just hear. That which you hear must become what you touch. Don't just touch it. That which you touch must also become that which you are walking upon. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you in this, just this short exhortation. I'm praying for you that you will walk in the revelations you have been hearing. The time has come, brothers and sisters, that you start to walk in the kind of plans and dreams you have been having. The things that you thought they will not happen. The impossibilities you thought they will never happen. God is giving you the grace and is giving you the grace to walk upon it. Some of you, you have been dreaming and dreaming and dreaming and dreaming things. Time has come that you start to walk on the life of your dreams. There is a man by the pool of Bethesda. For 38 years, that man has been sleeping upon, he has been sleeping upon one bed and the day came when Jesus comes him, comes closer to him at the pool of Bethesda and he said, do you want to get well? And the man says, yes, Lord, I have nobody to take me to the water. When the water is stirred up, somebody is already in. I want to tell this to somebody tonight as we begin our evening service that my friends, brothers and sisters, there is a place in God where in the life that you've been dreaming about for 38 years becomes a life you walk upon. The Bible says that the man who was by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, Jesus told him, pick up your bed and walk. There is a man who was there for 38 years. This man slept in one bed for 38 years, dreaming that one day I will walk, dreaming that one day the life that I'm dreaming about will become a reality. That one day is today. I don't know where you are. Today is that day. In the mighty name of Jesus, the life of your dreams is beginning to be released for you. You'll begin to walk upon the things you have been dreaming about. I'm not talking about wishful thinking. There are people who have been dreaming about big things and they've been having big goals and all of that. But God sent me to preach to somebody tonight that in the mighty name of Jesus, you will begin to walk in the life of your dream. That thing which you have been dreaming about, that which, that thing which you wish to touch with your own hands. The Bible says that there is a man by the name of Simeon. And when this man saw Jesus as a baby at the temple, he says that now that I have seen what God has told me, I can exit in peace. There is a generation who will not just hear the prophecy they will also see the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Every prophetic word over your life that has been spoken from the Lord. I'm not talking about funny stuff that false prophets play with God's people. I'm talking about the word that comes from God. That word is beginning to be fulfilled. The promises of God are yes and amen, my friends. That word which God has released upon you, the promise which has been hanging over your head, the time has come that that word becomes a reality. You will walk in dominion. There is blood that has been anointed on your right foot. And that is the blood that signifies and activates dominion. The Bible says that anoint the high priest. Anoint him. Anoint him to, 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 to hear. Anoint him to hear. Let there be blood on the tip of his right ear. Let there be blood on the thumb. Let there be blood on the big toe. This was activating the ability to hear revelation. The ability to touch revelation. The ability to walk in revelation. When when revelation becomes a reality, when revelation becomes a reality, you will start to walk in it. That enterprise that you dreamed about for 10 years, a year has come and this year is the year that you will begin to walk on it. I'm prophesying and preaching to somebody right now. Wherever you are, the personal goals and dreams you had, they will not die. You have been dreaming for it for years and years and the Lord sent me to announce this to you, that in the name of Jesus, that baby that you wish, mama, that barren mama who is watching me. For many years you have been dreaming to have your own son. Next year by this time, Sarah, your wife, will have a son in the name of Jesus. And when the year came, the following year, Abraham and Isaac hold Isaac. With Abraham and Sarah hold Isaac with their own hands. The word of God is being translated into realities. The word of God is being translated into realities. The revival we have been singing about is being translated into realities in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, through the blood of Jesus, he bought the price for you to hear him. And when you hear him, it's not going to end up in just hearing him. You are going to move from hearing him. And the word which you have heard from him will become the tangibles which you will touch. That which you have heard is becoming tangibles. The promise which you have heard is becoming a tangible. Last year, by this time, Isaac was being promised. This year, you are touching him. This year, you will hold him. That prophet you dreamed about. Some of you, you will begin to make your own business for the very first time. You have been dreaming and dreaming and dreaming of starting your own enterprise. This is not going to happen by magic. It's happening because God promised it and it is coming to pass. You heard clearly from God. In the morning, we said, don't start things until you clearly hear. And some of you, you have started things because you have heard. But I'm coming here this afternoon to announce that by the blood of Jesus, which was on the hand of the high priest, the high priest can now handle what that which he has heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. May the Lord start to minister to you wherever you are. May the Lord start to minister to you wherever you are. May the Lord start to minister to you wherever you are. May the Lord start to minister to you wherever you are. May the Lord start to minister to you wherever you are. Your goals are, will become a reality. Your goals will become a reality. Your plans will become a reality. You're not going to just end up in hearing the good things that God has laid in your heart. These things are being translated into realities. Your hands will hold it. Your your hands will touch it. Your hand will touch the promises of God and say, this is the result that which God has spoken over my life years ago. Every prophetic word hanging over your head, every promise that you are having from the Bible, some of you have been confessing and confessing and confessing scriptural promises about healing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is activation tonight. When the blood came upon the hands of the high priest and his sons, it was a clear indication that a new Testament generation is coming and that generation will not just hear the voice of the Lord. They will also see tangibles out of the voice of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord minister to you wherever you are. That goal is becoming a reality. The year is this year. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about the economic status of your nation. Don't worry about the economic status of your city. You are not governed by that. You are not governed by that. You are governed by what God says. You are not ruled by that. You are under what God says and it will come out according to what God has said. Next year by that time, Sarah hold Isaac. There is somebody here listening and watching to me right now. God has promised you something last year out of his word. You caught and hook up yourself with the promise promise of God and that promise will become a tangible. A season is now where goals are becoming realities. A season is now where that dream marriage is becoming a reality. A season is now where that dream home is becoming a reality. A season is now where that dream education is becoming a reality. A season is now where that PhD will become a reality. A season is now where the revival which we sang about is becoming a reality. Hallelujah. Take this time and just thank you wherever you are. Just thank him. That baby is coming. That car is coming. That house will come. That, that PhD will be completed. It has been a dream for years and years and years. And a season has come. 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 This is not just about materials. This is about the fulfillment of what God has promised. The Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. Now we can take that and go and cash it. And let it be a night tonight where you are cashing every promise of God. That he has whispered in your ears. You have heard him clearly and these promises are now in the season where we are cashing them. We are cashing the prophetic words. We are cashing the promises of God. We are cashing declaration. We are cashing them just like going to the bank and cash a check. What God has promised you is becoming a reality. You will not just touch it. You will also walk in it. I'm not just going to see it by my own eyes. Oh, I don't know if somebody is hearing me. I'm not just going to see it by my own eyes. I will also walk 
in it. You will not just see the fulfillment of the promise. You will also walk in it. So I announce over you, this is your year to walk in power. This is your year to walk in dominion. This is your year to walk in freedom. This is your year to walk in authority. This is your year to walk in the fulfillment of the promise of God. This is your year to walk into the realities of what God has promised you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, through his blood, blood in the ears, blood in the hands, blood on the foot, foot walking on it, hands touching it, ears hearing it. You are covered, my friends. In the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the realities of his blood are going to be what you testify about. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. That goodness that you dreamed about, it is what is going to begin to follow you. Things are looking for you right now. I don't know where you are right now. You're watching me. You're looking at me. And, and wherever you are, I'm announcing this right now on this anointing. That goodness and mercy, you are not going to hunt for them. They're beginning to look for you and follow you. Wherever you are, wherever you are, over that business, over that family, over that house, over that thing that you're doing. In the precious name of Jesus, God is not a son of man who can lie. It is impossible for God to lie. When God speaks something and you hear it clearly, surely your hands will touch it. Surely your foot will walk on it. You will walk on it. If God says, I'm taking you to Canaan, you will walk in the promises and the fulfillment of that word. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 The fulfillment of what God has spoken, the fulfillment of the prophetic word is here. Isaac is here. Isaac is here. That heavy rain which you've heard is here. In the precious name of Jesus, God loves you and he cares about you. He brought Jesus for these reasons. Not just to take you to heaven, not just to die for your sins, but to give you life and have life in abundance here before you go there. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We are taking a break. This is our first session. We are coming back. And when we come back, we will do a teaching for tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Dimensions of hearing. What he paid for, you will hear it. What he paid for, you will touch it. What he paid for, you will walk on it. The blood of Jesus in three places. In the precious name of Jesus. Welcome to the New Testament priesthood. It is impossible for God to lie. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.